so good to see you. I hope that you are enjoying your day. I know I certainly am. It is pouring down rain here, so I just wanted to come on and do my basic everyday look, kind of have the chatty get ready with me because I've had a lot on my mind lately as far as beauty stuff. I know that you know you understand where I'm coming from, kind of where I'm thinking, so I thought a chatty get ready with me might be kind of fun, especially since you know it's it's been requested a lot lately, which I don't know how you guys do it because I tried to start filming this and I just felt like my brain was all over the place. So I have done some of the steps. I wanted to start it over because I just sounded like, <sighs> I sounded beyond incoherent. So, you know, to kind of show you what I've got on my face, I primed my face with the Monistat Chafing Relief Powder Gel. I love this stuff, drugstore prices. It's amazing. And then um, foundation wise, I've got on the Inglot AMC Cream Foundation in the shade LC100. Um, my husband picked this up for me in Prague. I kind of just wanted to use it because it's really suiting me now that I've got slight bit of color. I mean, I don't self tan or anything, but it's working for me right now. And I actually really do like the foundation. And then as far as my setting powder, I went on and used the NARS Translucent Crystal Setting Powder to set my entire face. Um, my eyeshadow base, I've got the Urban Decay Primer Potion in the original formula and the um, NYX Jumbo Eyeshadow Pencil in Milk because I know there are uh, quite a few of you that are new subscribers. I use that to brighten up my inner corners and under my brow bone for my frames. And then, um, like I said, basic look with the Lorac Pro palette as we continue to pan the palette because um, I'm running errands today. I've got some things to do at school for my son and teachers so I wanted a no muss no fuss kind of makeup look and so the other shadow base I wanted to use on my lid is the buxom cream shadow in the shade poodle it's just a beautiful um, light white gold color and then I've gone through with um, mauve in my crease I just took it on a flat shader brush kind of tapped it off a little bit made a cut crease transition shade for my hooded lids and now we're going to kind of get into um, the rest of the eye look because like I said trying to put on makeup and talk at the same time is challenging <laughs> so it is so challenging um, but I just I kind of wanted to come on here and do a chatty get ready with me because last night I really it's more than just last night um, I've really been thinking long and hard you know about me versus my collection I'm just taking light bronze all over my lid right now on top of that buxom shadow um, and I've just, I've come to a point where I'm done. I'm done shopping at Sephora and I think that I finally hit that sweet spot in the I'm on a no buy, like, or, or in a no buy because, um, I have to admit that this year has been a little bit of a... A learning curve I have not made it you know every single month since January without purchasing makeup because it's challenging and it's very very tough when you're used to just being able to go and purchase whenever um, but I, I just wanted to sit down and share that I think it's because like between the the Lorac Mega Pro bust last year even though I got to get one the second time around it was like there was that big palette bust and then I didn't purchase any makeup during the Epic Rewards deal but I was really disappointed in how Sephora handled it with the people that did choose to purchase and so I finally just thought everything through thought what it means to be a part of the rewards program and at the end of the day it's not it is not and I mean I guess where I, where I really should go as I put, I, I'm taking a small, actually, let me do my highlighting first. Um, I'm taking a fluffy shader brush and I'm just going into a matte cream shade. I finally finished my uh, cream from Lorac Pro. And so I'm going into the shade from my Stila in the light palette called Bare, just kind of stamping it into my inner portion and then under my brow bone. Um, but anyways, back to the Sephora thing. I've, I've been really disenchanted with shopping at Sephora for quite a while now. And this just kind of put the nail in the coffin, I guess, for me in a way. Because 
I don't know about you, but I've been shopping at Sephora for over 10 years now. I started shopping there pretty much when they first opened, like, what, early 2000s or something? And I've been VIB, you know, ever since the beginning. And so, you know, I, I remember the days when Sephora used to give legitimate gifts with purchase. I mean, like, when you would buy makeup, they would give you, you know, deluxe size basically full size samples of like benefit creaseless cream shadows because i mean they're about the size of the maybelline color tattoos and the deluxe size samples and i remember getting those and deluxe size samples of blushes and you know you were able to get more than just a perfume sample and a tin foil sample of stuff and now it just nothing is for free in that store and it really just burns the fact that you're paying essentially for every 100 point perk, you have to spend $100. So when you really get down to thinking about it, each sample is costing you 100 bucks. It's cheaper to buy the full size product. I mean, seriously, they have a great return policy, like props to Sephora on that one. But I just feel like there's no incentive because I mean to get VIB Rouge it means you're spending a thousand dollars a year and you're only entitled to 10 samples if you don't have any backup points saved or if you're a VIB member it's what three samples and some change you know I don't remember if it's what $315 or $350 I don't remember it's it's been a little bit since I've looked you know and, and if you're a beauty insider I mean it's just like there's no incentive to really go and shop at Sephora anymore. You know what I mean? Because that was the other thing of like, it just kind of boggled my mind when I first earned VIB Rouge because one of the big perks was free two day shipping. The shipping for me has always been fast from Sephora. And the way I see it is if you've gotten to the point of earning VIB Rouge, you're muscle trained <laughs> to spend 50 bucks online so you avoid the shipping costs. I mean, that's just, it is what it is. We've been muscle trained for so long. And so I didn't see that as a perk. Now I'm going in with my um, NYX eyeliner in dark brown that I'm using for my Finish 13 by Halloween. Just kind of going over my eyes here. So, I mean, I just, it, it's something to think about. And, you know, if you saw my picture, you saw kind of my thinking out loud of what we could potentially spend in a year as far as our makeup collections. Because, I mean, if you're signing yourself up for VIB Rouge, it means you are holding yourself accountable to spend $1,000 per year to maintain that VIB Rouge. And then if you've earned VIB Rouge, you might be shopping at Ulta as well, because I know I've kind of started transferring some of my stuff over to Ulta because I can actually convert my points to cash back and then still use Ebates if I shop online. And then I don't have to wait for the friends and family sale or the 20% off sale in November or the 20% off sale in what, March? I can get 20% off whenever they send me the coupon. So I just... <laughs> I really feel like I've hit a good place, a sweet spot in this no buy because even though I have not made it the entire year so far without purchasing makeup because I mean that's a hard hard thing to do and if you're if you if you've done it, I am so in admiration. I think that I needed a little bit more time and now that I have the realizations I do I'm ready for it. Like I really feel ready for it because I mean a thousand dollars a year at Sephora, four hundred dollars a year to get to maintain your platinum so that your points don't expire at Ulta. That's already fourteen hundred dollars in makeup that you've volunteered yourself to. Alright, so let's say you have an Ipsy bag too, and that's you know the ten dollars a month, and then you have Birch Box, another ten dollars a month. Well, add that up over the course of a year, you're looking at $240. So if you add up being a VIB Rouge member, $1,000 a year, the Ulta Platinum member, $400, plus $240 in subscriptions, 
you've automatically volunteered yourself to spend $1,640 a year. This is before walking into Target. This is before walking into any of your department stores. If you like to buy Chanel, you like to buy Mac, um, or if you're shopping online before you buy anything from ColourPop or Makeup Geek, it just, $1,640 in potential money that we're already allocating to makeup. I mean, think about it. In five years, you could buy a, a great car. You could put, you know, a down payment on a house. You could do all sorts of things with that. It just, it really, I don't know. Like I, like I said, I've, I've really come to terms with my spending in the last couple of years compared to what it was. And my spending is nowhere near what it was on makeup, but it really just, it was, it was a tough, tough thing to swallow last night when I really got down and, and wrote those numbers out to be like, ugh, you know, just a knife to the jugular because I have to admit, I was excited to earn Viabi Rouge. I'm gonna go in with espresso. Like I said, I don't know how you do this where you can talk and put on makeup at the same time because it's not necessarily working for me. Um, I'm just basically setting my liner because when I wear, um, any type of liner, it doesn't matter if it's a cream, a gel, a pencil, because I have hooded eyes and it's humid, I like to set them just so I don't have to worry about my liner going anywhere during the day. Um, but anyways, like, you know, just kind of going back to the Sephora thing, I have to admit, I was excited about earning VIB Rouge because I kept, you know, I knew I'd exceeded the point of spending for VIB and you know vib rouge had been in effect for you know well over a year because i haven't actually been a vib rouge that long um but when i finally earned it i was just kind of like now what like i really think there'd be more incentive to shop at sephora if they actually did a little bit more for the for the rouge people because i mean even with the epic awards i was a little bit disappointed in how they handled it because like I said, I didn't purchase any makeup in that. I had no intentions of going in to try for the Epic Rewards because I've been on a no-buy. But as far as I understand, the people that spent money and sent in an email, their compensation for it was a $50 gift card to Sephora. It won't even get you a deluxe size sample. You know what I mean? Like, it just... It kind of rubbed me the wrong way, you know what I mean? And I really feel like it would be more of an incentive to shop in there if they'd offer VIB Rouge members maybe a quarterly sample box where they send a just a little bag of like maybe five samples of things to try, maybe a skincare, a hair care, a makeup item. Just something to say, thank you for shopping at our store. Thank you for choosing to spend your money with us as opposed to going to other you know, uh, businesses. And I just, I don't feel like that's there. Um, I feel like maybe Sephora has been on the top of the food chain a little too long. I don't know. Like I said, I've been shopping there a long, long time. And I really just kind of, I didn't shop at Ulta because it wasn't necessarily convenient. I wanted to keep all my makeup shopping kind of confined in one deal you know, with the exception of going to the department stores if I wanted to pick up brands that I couldn't find at Sephora. And now I feel like I'm gonna make more of an effort to go into. All right, and then next I'm taking the Maybelline um, Instant Age Rewind Eraser for Dark Circles and Brightener and just kind of going under my eyes. But I have to admit that, you know, I like the fact that Sephora has kind of the more boutique like feel you know you can find them in the mall whereas Ulta you kind of have to drive up to a strip mall it's it doesn't feel as fancy to go in but at the same time I just I can't get myself anywhere torn away from the idea that shopping at Sephora is not rewarding anymore I mean if I have to spend a hundred dollars for a sample or if I buy the 250 sample point perk I have to spend $250 to get what three samples and then if you spend 500 points on a 500 point perk that's the equivalent of $500 and a thousand I mean it's just it seems so ludicrous 
to me. And I just, the way I see it is if you spend the $1,000 at Sephora every year, and then you go in and spend the $400 plus at Ulta, because I mean, think about it. If we spend the $1,000 to get VIB Rouge, more than likely we're spending beyond that to make sure that we maintain it. Same thing at Ulta, we're making sure we spend beyond the $400 so that we maintain it into the following year. You've bought everything, <laughs> like literally nothing new can be made that you don't have except for packaging. And I think that's where I needed to kind of realize that's where I am with my makeup. I'm just going through with the NARS Translucent Crystal Setting Powder on an e.l.f. Uh, powder brush and setting my under eye concealer. But I think that's where I finally had to realize that's where it is. It's, it's in the packaging because, you know, I've really been spurred to shop my stash. I guess this is kind of an I'm on a no buy update as well. Um, I've really been inspired to shop my stash because when I see things like the Carly Bible or Carly Bible palette that she's coming out with BH Cosmetics, I instantly looked at the shades and I'm like, it looks like the Lorac Pro. It looks like the Naked palette. It looks like every other neutral eyeshadow palette except she focused on bronze and gold. There's nothing new. Um, ColourPop really kind of appealed to me because it's a trendy thing, but then I was looking at the colors and I'm like, I've already got things at home. I might as well stick to what I have, and when I downsize, then I can try ColourPop. Or looking at the Lorac Mega Pro 2 palette that's gonna come out this holiday season. I really, as far as the Mega Pro palette is concerned, I really think that those colors were kind of an afterthought. I agree with Autumn on this, that they just, it feels like they just kind of mishmashed colors together in a hurry to get the palette out to soothe the demand that was going on around it. But I don't think that they put a lot of thought. I'm gonna run a uh, pewter on my lower lash line with a uh, pencil brush. This is an e.l.f. pencil brush. And so when I was looking at the swatches of the um, Mega Pro 2 palette, I was just, I was unimpressed. I mean, the color names weren't original. And one of the things about Lorac that really kind of bugs me to no end is the fact that um, a lot of their what seem like intensely pigmented shades are really just black eyeshadow with whatever shimmer the color is. Like deep purple is black eyeshadow with purple shimmer. Deep teal is black eyeshadow with teal shimmer. Jade from the Pro 2 palette is black eyeshadow with green shimmer. I mean, you get my drift. And so, you know, I certainly am a lot less persuaded to buy that palette after panning the Lorac Pro palette this year because I don't want more of that type of situation in my collection. But, you know, then I saw like the Urban Decay Vice palette and swatches and it's pretty, don't get me wrong. You know, I, I would totally understand if you fall in love with it, this is benefits uh, hula that I'm gonna go in and contour my face with. But I just, like, I finally realized I already, I have everything that's coming out. And it just, it's not exciting anymore. And then now that they're also talking about releasing the NARS Pro Palette, where you can fill up the entire thing with your own pans, it sounds cool on one side because then you're like, I can have NARS packaging with all of the NARS eyeshadows and blushes and fill up a palette so it's all in one place. I get it, it looks pretty in our storage. But at the same time, it's probably gonna be cheaper to buy a Makeup Geek, you know, palette, or Z palette, not Makeup Geek palette, Z palette than it will be to buy the NARS thing. And then if you buy the NARS palette, I don't know if you're like me, but if you have empty space in it, you're gonna wanna fill it at some point unless you've panned it. And so it's just, it's encouraging you to spend more money. Or like the Kat Von D Shade and Light contouring palette that's gonna have the refillable pans. Sounds great. It, you know, it would be great, but you know, it's just, it's buying a second refill of the same thing or, or the other one, the Hourglass, where the highlighting powders and the blush are in the same palette. You realize how many people are gonna go crazy over that thing and it's gonna sell out and they already own the highlighting palette and the blush palette separately, but they're gonna buy that just because it's all in one place. Like it's just, it's nuts. Now I'm taking mauve on an e.l.f. blush brush. I'm just gonna go through and do my cheeks. I've really liked mauve 
um, as a blush with this look because it's so subtle and it's also helping me to get through mauve a little bit faster. Um, you know, but I just, I don't know, kind of comment below and tell me what you think because just $1,640 you know, $1, a year is, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I don't know. And, and I don't even do the subscription services, but I know like I am a VIB Rouge member. Um, I'm obviously gonna lose it because I'm not buying makeup. But even if I didn't have VIB Rouge, I'm at the point where I don't even care if I'm a VIB member. And I know that takes a lot coming from me because I've been a VIB member for 10 years. I mean, it just, I don't care. I don't, it's, it's not a reward anymore to shop there. And I just, I don't know. Like I'd like to maintain my, my platinum membership at Ulta because I can convert that to cash back. Cause I mean, basically when I bought my sugar pop palette from Too Faced, I got it for free. I'm just highlighting with Bare from um, my Stila palette to kind of start using that a little bit. Cause, oh, well, I guess we can kind of talk about that. But as far as pan that palette for next year, I have officially decided to pan my Stila in the light. And I'm also gonna pan my Stila in the no because I thought that would be a great um, palette for me to personally choose because it's one of my older, but it's also one of the not so much talked about. I know Miu Miu G is painting hers. Um, there have been a couple other people painting their Stila palette as well. And if you're kind of at a cross point not knowing which palette to choose, those are good places to start because even if you use your palettes that have the cardboard packaging, they basically re-released them with the gold um what are they're called like the spirit palette and i forget what the matte palette was but they look like in the light and in the nose so if you fall in love with those shades you can purchase them but i wanted to choose the stila palettes because i've really really enjoyed having the huge community this year of people pinning the Lorac pro palette it's been so nice to share ideas and bounce um, you know, what's worked and what hasn't and basically I need to go in and do my lashes while, while I keep trying to talk through this whole thing. But, um, I've really, really enjoyed having that sense of community because, um, you have helped me think outside the box with shades like deep purple and, you know, with, with black and espresso and garnet <laughs> and gold. And so, I thought Stila, you know, those are palettes that a lot of us own because maybe we jumped on the bandwagon a couple of years ago. And so it'd be a good place to start if you have them um, and you haven't touched them for a while. It might be a good place to start and also kind of give us a, a range of shades. Um, but I'm going to go on and try to tackle both palettes. I can't pan all 20 um, shades out of the, the two because... Um, you know, there's 10 shades per palette, but in both palettes, there is a matte black. Who am I kidding? I'm not going to make it through two pans of matte black in a year. There's two pans of a dark espresso shade. I'm not going to make it through two pans. So that's already four pans that pretty much nicks off the list. I'm not going to finish. Um, so I thought about it and I want to go on and tackle as much of the. So I want to tackle as much of the Stila and the light palette as I can and see what I can accomplish out of the. Um, Stila and the No palette. I'm just going through and curling my lashes with a Revlon lash curler. I know super fancy, but if you have hooded eyes, this is a great, um, you know, technique to have if you want to make your lashes look a little bit bigger. And I'm going through with this Clinique, um, pardon me, High Impact Extreme Volume Mascara in the darkest black shade. Holy cow, I love this. I talked about this in my standouts, tips, and shoutouts. And it is a mascara that I kind of had to come around to love because when I first got it, it was a, a messy, messy product to deal with. It was all over my face. It was not cool. In the humidity, it would slide everywhere. It made my eyes burn. But I realized that once you let it dry out a little bit, it really does wonderful things for, for your lashes. So I heard that per recommendation from Marnie or Miss Gold Girl. And now I think, you know, I could be persuaded to try some more Clinique products in the future. So, yeah, that's basically my face, I guess. That just, I need some practice at these chatty get ready with me's, but basically need to get out my MAC Fix Plus. I'm kind of 
gonna spritz that. Get my glasses here. But I don't know, just kind of comment below and I'm interested to hear how you feel about things because I don't feel a need to apologize for my makeup collection. I mean, I've accumulated it over the course of years. Makeup has always been a passion for me and it's, it's a hobby. It's something that I enjoy spending my money on. I choose to spend my money on, but I just, I finally hit that point where I'm like, enough is enough. This is why I'm, I'm painting palettes. This is why I'm downsizing my collection because I'm just, I'm over bringing more of the same more of the same home. Even if it looks a little bit different, I'm tired of bringing home more of the same. So, um, lips, almost forgot about that. Brings me back to case in point. Um, I really, really loved the Bite Beauty lipstick in the shade Rhubarb. And I actually finished painting it a couple of weeks ago. So I went through my collection and I found the Too Faced La Creme lipstick and Pink Chocolate duplicate shade. So, Yes, and by the way, if you want to. Okay, so that's about it. I'm just gonna put on a necklace and be done for the day. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, for bearing with me. This was pretty fun, but I think next time I'll be a little bit more kind of put together and things to talk about. So I hope that you enjoy your day, that you have a fantastic week, and I look forward to seeing you very, very soon. Bye.